finally, we're driving what some say is the real new Defender. Right everyone, the Ineos Grenadier. Now, I'll be honest, as a concept, this car never really clicked with me because, of course, it looks very much like the iconic Land Rover Defender. Even though it's a brand new car, but I'll tell you what, in terms of capability, this thing is off the scale. We'll be hurling the Grenadier at the scenery a bit later on. But first, a bit of background. The Grenadier is the brainchild of Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the CEO of Ineos and a big fan of the original Land Rover Defender. Conveniently, he's also a billionaire. So when Land Rover stopped building the previous Defender, he approached them to buy the tooling to continue production. Predictably, Land Rover said no. So Ratcliffe decided to build his own car. And here it is. The Grenadier is new from the ground up, with a body on frame construction, live axles and BMW power designed to give it supreme ability in the rough stuff. But before we drive it, here's Ineos test driver and Dakar rally specialist Mark Cullum to explain the details. Firstly, Mark, I just wanted to go through some of the technical details of this car because, like I said earlier, it's a ground-up project, isn't it? It shares nothing with the Defender or anything else, really, apart from the powertrain, as we'll get on to later. But, yeah, just talk us through what makes this so great off-road. So, what makes it so great? So, we've got a, a high-torque delivery engine, so the engine is producing a phenomenal amount of torque. That torque is seamlessly going through a transmission that is automatic. And that means that I've got a, a seamless um, input of drive through to all four wheels. So we're permanent four by four. We've got an ability to lock the center differential to enhance traction at the first level. But the next level in terms of our extreme off-road, we can lock the actual differentials in each axle, which is uh, you know, quite a unique to this type of vehicle. Yeah. Um, and the other kind of design elements associated with it, it has you know, really efficient ground clearance, good uh, approach departure and ramp clearance. It has excellent articulation, so that means the wheel travel on the beam axles is, uh, you know, and, and suspension is a really important element in terms of off-road capability. So, and this, this articulation is kind of, you know, on par with the best in terms of uh, off-road vehicle manufacturers. Another thing I wanted to mention was the chassis construction, because obviously a lot of modern SUVs, they've gone for a monocoque, haven't they, where the body is like integral with the chassis and provides all the strength. Whereas this is very different, isn't it? It's almost a little bit more old school. You've got a ladder chassis. What are the benefits of going for that design instead of something modern like a full monocoque? So the key benefits is uh, rigidity for a start. So we can engineer rigidity into the ladder frame chassis. And we can also then also engage with a simple engineering solution for putting the engine and the transmission and the 4x4 system and then obviously my driveline, my axles and my, my kind of suspension setup so, you know, suspended off that ladder frame chassis. And then the other key advantage with having a ladder frame chassis is we can make it much more modular. So we can change the configuration if it was required from, you know, a station wagon to a commercial platform and even dare I say you know a, a pickup variation it's very easy to modify whereas when you go monocoque it's uh, it's a, a lot more of a complex capability to, to, to modify. Speaking of different body styles a Grenadier pickup is already in the works and you can expect seven seater and short wheelbase versions to appear down the line but enough talk it's time to get muddy. Just take a look at this Man, that's amazing. So we're in the petrol powered Grenadier. It's a straight six from BMW, three liters. It's turbocharged, we've got plenty of torque, which is what you need when you're doing this kind of stuff. And that motor, it drives through an eight speed ZF gearbox and locking diffs. We've got a locking center diff of Ineos's own design. This thing is just finding grip and traction over this deep, wet mud like you would not believe. Like, just look at this. This is a steep incline. And it's just, it's just mastering it. Wow. Okay, this is a very steep bit. We've just seen another Grenadier fail to get up this. Oh, we're sliding. We'll, we'll, we'll go up here. Here we go. 
There we go. Nice. Wow, this is only a pre-production prototype, but it's got skills off-road. It really does. And we're on optional off-road tyres. At the moment, all the tread blocks are just being caked with mud, but it's still doing the job. And the thing is about the Grenadier is it's quite an expensive car. I mean, if you want to buy one of these, it's going to cost over 50 grand. But the basics are actually traditional off-roader components. So we've got a ladder chassis, we've got locking diffs, and we've got a very steep hill. Here we go. <laughs> Man, this thing is unstoppable. Those electronic locking diffs really work too, helping the Grenadier scramble up muddy inclines without much drama. But what about on the way down? Right, so now we're just gonna let off the brakes, let off the throttle, and let it creep down this really steep bit here. And it's just effortless. I can't believe we've not just slid off here. That's amazing. And this ridge here, well, it's perfect for showing the wheel articulation if we stop sliding here. So look, we've got live axles. We've got grip all the time. And of course, this is a 50 grand car. It's not cheap. It's not really the, what you'd pay for a normal workhorse, is it? But, it feels robust. It feels like it can take what you're throwing at it thanks to that ladder chassis. All right, let's clean the tires. <laughs> That's the fun bit. We've got 281 horsepower from this petrol inline six, which really is plenty. This is an extremely heavy car. It's got a big steel ladder frame chassis and a big steel body on top of that, even though the openings, like the doors and the bonnet, they're aluminium. So we'll give it some again here. It really does get a move on. And those dampers, they're doing a great job at ironing out all these bumps and these fine imperfections in this mud surface. It just feels so, it feels impervious, this thing. This isn't a massively challenging course, but the Grenadier really does just bully itself through the terrain. It's over two meters tall as well. So you've got a great view of the landscape while you're being bashed around. The steering wheel though is not so great. Because it's a simple two-spoke design, you can easily get crossed up while you're working the wheel because it looks and feels almost exactly the same when it's pointing straight or upside down. Really annoying when you're trying to climb up a slippery slope. Whatever you think of the looks and obviously the Defender heritage, you can't deny that this car is unbelievably capable and I think Inside here, it was a master stroke to use BMW's iDrive system. It's reskinned for the Grenadier, but it's one of the best infotainment systems out there, which is really a novelty <laughs> in a serious off roader like this. We need to drive this car on the road, we need to see what it's like because with the componentry we've got here, there are signs that it might be a bit compromised when you get on tarmac, but you cannot fault it in the rough stuff. The Grenadier is pretty much unstoppable.